dear learners today i will discuss a unit that is rules of inference and unit number 7 in this unit we will discuss only two basic points first one is rules of inference and the second one is some solve examples of rules of inference now this unit not only introduces to you the rules of inference but also the uses of the rules in case of formal proof of validity it also provides us to go through some solve examples of the rules of inference in order to know how the rules of inference are applied to test the validity of arguments now dear learners you will see that what is rules of inference in the preceding chapter you have already come to know the formal proof of validity which discusses the concepts like strategy for deduction rules of inference rules of refreshment differences between rules of inference and the rules of refreshment test of formal proof general suggestion for formal deduction etc therefore this unit emphasizes only on the application of the rules of inference now dear learners you will see there are nine rules of inference these rules are considered self evident and are therefore valid without any proof on the basis of these rules we can determine the test of validity or invalidity of arguments as we can derive a conclusion on the basis of self evident rules so the method of deriving a conclusion from the rules is called deductive method now dear learners you will see what are the rules of inference you see dear learners first one is modus ponens that is p implies q p therefore q this is the rules of modus ponens so what what it is mean this rule means affirmation of the antecedent and on that basis consequent is affirmed we can take an example of valid argument by applying this rules now dear learners you see we can take a example you see dear learners if modu is intelligent he will be able to pass in the examination and modhu is intelligent therefore he will be able to pass in the examination and this argument can be symbolized as valid argument form of the rule of modus ponens so you see the learners how can we symbolize this type of argument you see we can symbolize this example so in this way p implies q p implies q means if modhu is intelligent then he will be able to pass in the examination and you see p means modhu is intelligent and therefore q q indicates that he will be able to pass in the examination now they are learners you see there are also other valid argument forms of modus ponens now dear learners you will see there are also other valid argument forms of modus ponens they are negation p implies negation q negation p therefore negation q you see the second rules of inference that is modus tollens now dear learners you see in the blackboard p implies q negation q therefore negation p so you uh, they are learners you see this argument means the denial of the consequent and on that basis the antecedent is denied means p implies q negation q therefore negation p so they are learners we can take an example of valid argument form by applying this rule and this the argument is you see if he wins in the maths 
he will give us a party. He will not give us a party, therefore he does not win the match. So this is the example of modus tollens. But how can we symbolize this type of argument, dear learners? You see that the symbolic form of this argument is P implies Q. P implies Q negation Q, therefore negation P. This is the symbolic form of modus tollens. So this symbolic form is considered valid argument form of modus tollens. Now, dear learners, you see, the third rule of inference, the rules of inference is disjunctive syllogism. So you see, dear learners, P val Q negation P, therefore negation, therefore Q. So this is the rule of disjunctive syllogism. This argument holds that if one of the options or disjuncts is denied in the minor premise, the other option or disjuncts is accepted in the conclusion. So we can take real example of disjunctive syllogism. Dear learners, you see in the blackboard, either he will win or defeat in the match, he will not win in the match. Therefore, he will defeat in the match. So this is the real example of disjunctive syllogism. But how can we symbolize this real example? You see, dear learners, how can we symbolize? So P val Q means either he will win or defeat in the match. Either he will win or defeat in the match if we, uh, if we take P and if we take Q here, then it means P val Q. P means he will win or Q means defeat in the match. Then you see, this means he will not win in the match, which means negation P. So, and the last one that is conclusion, he will defeat in the match, means Q. So, this is, in this way, we can symbolize the example, P val Q, negation P, therefore, negation Q. Now, they are learners, you see, the fifth rule of inference is that is hypothetical syllogism. So, how can you write this type of uh, uh, rule of uh, hypothetical syllogism? P implies Q, Q implies R, therefore P implies R. The learners, you see, this rule means that both the premises are conditional statements and they have one common statement. The common statement is known as antecedent in one premise and the, and the other is consequent in another premise. We can take real example. Now we can take their learners real example of hypothetical syllogism in order to better understand its logical form. Now you see, dear learners, uh, uh, we can take a real example of hypothetical syllogism. If Modhu is intelligent, he will be able to pass in the examination. If he passes in the examination, he will be able to get a job. Therefore, if Modhu is intelligent, then he will be able to get a job. So this real example we can symbolize their learners. So you see how can we symbolize this uh, uh, real example of hypothetical syllogism. P implies Q, Q implies R, therefore P implies R. So this is a valid form of hypothetical syllogism. Their learners, you see the next rule of or inference that is conjunction that is you see dear learners 
P and Q, therefore P and Q. You see there learners P, Q and uh, therefore P dot Q. This rule means that the first two premises are joined together by the word and. Next one you see simplification rules. So P dot Q therefore only P. So this is the rule of simplification. This rule states that if the two premises are joined by the word n or by the symbol dot, the first variable or conjunct can be inferred as the conclusion. P dot Q, therefore P. So this is the rule of simplification. Now there are learners, you see, the seven rule, that is addition. So P So you see P, therefore P fell Q. So this rule is known as addition. So this rule means that we can add variable or variables to the premises by the symbol fell. Now the next rule is absorption. P implies Q, therefore P implies bracket begin P dot Q bracket close. So according to this rule, consequent carries antecedent, consequent carries antecedent in the conclusion. So this is uh, the rule of absorption. They are learners. Now you see constructive dilemma. This is another rule of rule, uh, rules of inference. How can we write the learners? You see, P implies Q, R implies S, P val R, therefore Q val S. So, what uh, this rule means that? This rule indicates that or this rule states that there are two conditional propositions. And a major premise possesses two different antecedents. You see, major premise indicates or major premise possesses two different antecedents. Here it is P or here it is R. So you see, therefore both denies different, both denotes different consequent. We can take a concrete example to understand. If a man is honest, he must be respected. And if he is a social worker, he must get reward. So a man is either an honest man or a social worker. Therefore, the conclusion is either he must be respected or he must get reward. So how can we symbolize this type of uh, concrete example they are learners you see p implies q dot r implies s and p well r therefore q well s so this is a valid form of constructive dilemma they are learners now you see Another rule of uh, rules of inference is that is destructive dilemma. They are learners, you see. So again, P implies Q dot R implies S dot negation Q fell negation S. Therefore, negation P fell negation R. So that is destructive dilemma. In the previous one, you have uh, you have already the idea of constructive dilemma. Here the next one, the opposite one, that is destructive dilemma. Now there are learners, you take a <coughs> concrete example, then you will be able to know. So we can take a concrete example in order to understand its logical form. If a man is honest, 
he must be respected and if he is a social worker he must get reward a man is either not respected or does not get reward therefore the conclusion is either he is not honest or not a social worker so this is all about a concrete example of destructive dilemma dear learners so now the next step is how can we symbolize this type of concrete example now dear learners you see how can we symbolize so in this way we can symbolize p implies q dot r implies s dot negation q hell negation s therefore negation p hell uh, negation r so this is a valid form of destructive dilemma so dear learners this is all about the rules of inference so how can we symbolize the concrete example the idea is given to you in the uh, previous slide now you see how can we determine the validity of arguments applying the rules of inference so you see they are learners therefore it is given the sole example of solved examples of rules of inference now you see dear learners there are some solved examples of formal proof of validity given in this section in order to understand how the rules of inference are applied to test the validity of arguments now dear learners you see this is an example so we have to apply the rules in order to find out the conclusion now dear learners you see first first step is p implies q second one is q implies s third one is p and the conclusion is s now you see how can we find out the conclusion s applying the rules of inference now dear learners you see first and second by hypothetical syllogism first and second if we use the rules of hypothetical syllogism then we find out the conclusion that is s so you see first we have to apply first and second by hypothetical syllogism first and second we apply our hypothetical syllogism then we find p implies s then fourth and third this is fourth and third we have to apply by modus ponens then we find the conclusion s so in this way we uh, we have to find out the conclusion or we can test the validity of arguments by applying the rules of inference so this is an solve this is a solve example of rules of inference dear learners now you see another one that is first one is p val q p val q implies r second one is as val p third step is negation s and conclusion r so here also we have to see what are the rules we have to apply here in order to deduce the conclusion r so near dear learners you see so in fourth step we find p how can we find p we have to apply second and third by disjunctive syllogism here you see second and third we have to apply disjunctive syllogism then we have to find p next you see how can we find p val q here also you see four addition this is four for p val q so this is the uh, we here apply addition rules now you see 
the next step are the conclusion are how can you find out how can you do this one and five modus ponens one that is one and another five so that is r we apply here modus ponens rules one and five then we find out the conclusion r so this is another solve examples of rules of inference they are learners so they are learners you see here p implies q r implies s p val r fourth step q val s implies t and the conclusion t now you see how can we find out or how can you deduce the conclusion t out of these four steps now you see one and two that is constructive dilemma so we have to apply this then we have find q l s next one four and five we apply modus ponens rules then we find out the conclusion t so this is another example of rules of inference dear learners now you see first we have to another <coughs> way another way of uh, deducing conclusion out of the premises means there are some real examples given to you you have to symbolize the argument after that you have to prove how can we deduce the conclusion out of the premises so you see out of the <coughs> premises so you see there is a, a real example given to you that is if rain comes in time farmer should be happy so how can we uh, symbolize that is r or f r means rain or f means farmer here so r implies f we can symbolize this example if rain comes in time farmer should be happy so we can symbolize r implies f next one if farmers are happy there will be good crops how can you symbolize they again farmers f and that is c so f implies c the rain comes in time so we can symbolize here giving r rains come in time then the conclusion will be there will be good crops so that it would be good crops that is conclusion c so how can we deduce their learners the conclusion c out of these three steps now they are learners you see we apply here one to hypothetical syllogism by applying one to hypothetical syllogism we find r implies c now you see how can we deduce the conclusion then c we apply four and three rules modus ponens rules here four and three means that is we find out the conclusion c applying modus ponens rules in four and three steps so this is the solve example of rules of inference they are learners so this is all about the rules of inference how can we apply the rules of inference in order to deduce the conclusion dear learners now you see what are the basic points in this unit rules of inference now dear learners you see in the blackboard rules of inference are considered self evident and are therefore valid without any proof on a basis of this rules we can determine or test the validity or invalidity of arguments that is why 
these rules are known as deductive method. Second one, modus ponens means what? Affirmation of the antecedent and on that basis consequent is affirmed. Modus tollens means the denial of the consequent and on that basis the antecedent is denied. And another one, another basic point is this argument holds that if one of the options or disjuncts is denied in the minor premise, the other option or disjuncts is accepted in the conclusion. Now you see dear learners, another basic point that is hypothetical syllogism means that both the premises are conditional statements and they have one common statement. The common statement is known as antecedent in one premise and uh, other is consequent in another premise. Uh, dear learners, this one is disjunctive syllogism. This one is disjunctive syllogism. So, dear learners, so this is all about the basic points of rules of inference, dear learners. Now, dear learners, you see what are the books you have to consult or you have to read in order to know the unit in a very comprehensive way. So, dear learners, you can take the book that is Sonda Sakraborty logic, informal, uh, symbolic, and inductive. So, this book you can take. Another one, Arvind Kopi, that is book is symbolic logic. And Kopi, uh, Cohen Kopi, that is introduction to logic. And R.C. Munshi, handbook of logic. And Sam Kishore Singh book, modern logic. And you can also take another very important uh, book, that is Krishna Join, a textbook of logic. I think they are lear uh, I think uh, they are learners you have understood by going through this unit and uh, for understanding on in order to know more you have to consult with this book what are the books I have already given to you so they are learners thank you